A hand-based thumb spike of splint may be indicated by conditions such as to Guervain's tenosynovitis, to immobilize the thumb and wrist for symptom control, rheumatoid arthritis, to reduce pain, slow deformity, and stabilize the thumb joint, osteoarthritis, to manage pain, stabilize the joint, help with inflammation control, joint protection, and maintaining function, and traumatic injuries to the thumb, to immobilize and stabilize the joint. A splint pan holds hot water to be used for heating the thermoplastic material. Scissors are used to cut patterns in material, and a spatula is needed to safely lift hot thermoplastic material from the splint pan. The most commonly used material for splint fabrication is thermoplastic material. This material can be softened for molding by placing in water heated between 135 degrees and 180 degrees. There are many properties to consider when selecting material for splint fabrication such as resistance to stretch, which refers to the elasticity of the material's tendency to return to its original shape, drapeability, or the amount of ease with which the material conforms to the underlying surface without manual assistance, bondability, or the degree to which the material will stick to itself when heated, working time after being removed from the water, breathability, which can be enhanced with perforations, and strength. Thermoplastic material comes in large sheets. The appropriate amount of material is cut from the sheet for each splint. Support hose or a stocking is used to keep the thermoplastic material from sticking to the client's hand. Velcro straps are used to secure the splint on the client. When making a pattern, it is helpful to use a paper towel or another type of thin paper that can be wrapped around the person's hand to check for fit. First, trace the person's hand onto the paper. Mark the IP joint of the thumb on the radial side and label it A. Then mark the IP joint of the thumb on the ulnar side and label it B. Next, mark the MCP joint of the second digit and label it C. Mark the MCP joint of the fifth digit and label it D. Mark the wrist joint on the ulnar side and label it E. Then mark the wrist joint on the radial side and label it F. Have the client remove their hand from the pattern. Starting with A, draw a curved line down to F. Then draw a line from F to E. Next, draw a line out from E so that the pattern is twice as wide as the hand. Curve the line up and around and connect back to D. Then, draw a line connecting D to C, C to B, and B to A. Cut out the pattern along the line that you have just drawn. Fit the pattern on the person's hand and make sure that the pattern can join in the web space between the thumb and the first digit. Trace the pattern onto the thermoplastic material. Remember that it is better to have too much material and have to trim away than to have too little. Place the material in the splint pan to heat up and soften so that it can be molded. To check the softness of the material, use your spatula to lift the corner of it while it's still in the water. Once the material is soft, remove it from the water and dry it. Next, cut along the line on the material that you have traced from your pattern. Scraps can be used to make other small splints or to make materials that can be used for a range of motion exercises in the clinic. Next, cut your support hose or stocking to be placed on the person's hand while making the splint. Keep in mind that support hose shortens in length when it is stretched out around the person's hand, so you may need to cut a longer piece. Then, cut a hole for the person's thumb to go through. Next, cut a piece for the person's thumb. Remember, it will shorten when fit around the thumb. Place the stockings on the person's thumb and hand, and reheat the material as needed. Dry the material and test the temperature to make sure it is not too hot for the client's hand. Wrap the material all the way around the thumb and make sure that it joins in the web space between the thumb and the first digit. Then, wrap around the fifth metacarpal. Press the material together in the web space and make sure that they are securely attached. Super glue can be used if needed. Work with the material and form it around the person's hand. 
Try not to press down into material with your fingertips. This can make indentions that can cause irritation or skin breakdown. Depending on the condition, you may need to roll down the material around the thumb to allow IP flexion. If indicated, roll down the material around the thumb and ask the person to bend thumb and make sure that they can do so comfortably. Then ask the client to touch the tips of each finger to the thumb. This is to make sure that the client still has functional use of their hand while wearing the splint. Make sure the client can perform radial and ulnar deviation with no impingement from the splint on the wrist. Ask the client if the splint is comfortable and trim as needed. Changes to be made can be marked on the splint with a fingernail and then cut once removed. Fine adjustments can be made using a heating gun or a part of the splint can be dipped back into the splint pan. Be careful when using the heating gun and cool as directed. Cold spray can be used to harden materials quickly. Once the material has been molded, you are ready to attach straps. Cut small strips of hook velcro to be attached to the splint. Apply super glue to the strips as needed to ensure hold. And place on the splint. Pull loop velcro strap from roll, but do not cut yet. Attach to hook velcro strips on both sides of the splint and then cut appropriate length from roll. Repeat this process for however many straps you need. Remove straps from splint and round edges so that there are no sharp corners. Place straps on splint and ask client if it is comfortable. Have client perform radial and ulnar deviation in opposition and make sure that they still have functional use and it is comfortable. If the splint is to be worn at night, or is preferred by the client, a softer strap with more cushion can be provided. Once the splint is finished, provide education about precautions and care for the splint. Instruct your client to keep the splint away from open flames and to not leave it in a hot car because it may lose its shape. Also, instruct the client not to make any changes to the splint themselves. If changes are needed, they should contact their therapist. The client should contact a therapist or physician immediately if there is any increase in swelling, severe pain, pressure in any areas, stiffness, or numbness and tingling. The client can care for their splint by cleaning it with warm water and soap, and cleaning the straps with warm water and letting them air dry. For hard to remove spots, soft scrub with bleach can be used. Just be sure to rinse thoroughly with water. To keep the splint clean, a spray antiperspirant can be used on the hand. With every splint that you make, there are many important considerations to be made. Will the client be able to perform ADLs? What are their leisure activities? Do client factors such as decreased sensation prevent the client from noticing irritation or skin breakdown? Does the client possess the process skills to correctly put on the splint? As an occupational therapist, it is important to always make sure that your intervention, even splinting, is occupation-based and client-centered.